Um, yeah, and we're now we're going to talk a little bit about why we're here and what Design Forward is, and then maybe in particular how it works. Um, so I'm going to start with just a little bit of um, sort of perspective on the framework for Design Forward. Um, so I think the first thing that is important to talk about, and I think Hannah gestured to a little bit um, about this earlier, but in this professional development series, we're gonna focus more on questions than on solutions. Um, I think for a lot of you, this is kind of second nature, you know, you're, you're curious, inquisitive people, but it's really not second nature for professional development in general. Um, so in general, professional development tends to focus um, on that kind of workshop model, right? Come in for an hour and we will like show you something, teach you how to do it. It'll potentially solve a problem that you're having in your teaching. And we do intend to do some of that stuff in Design Forward. Um, but I think one of the central tenets of Design Forward is that we don't think that there are problems that need solutions in teaching. Um, there's nothing wrong or broken about how you teach. There's nothing that needs to be fixed or that can be fixed with you know, one simple thing. So um, I'm thinking about it the way we talk about wicked problems at Plymouth State in, in TWP, for example, our, our first year um, tackling a wicked problem class. So we focus, for example, on a wicked problem like hunger, um, which is a problem and it's so complex that there's no one thing you can do to solve it. Teaching, I think, as we approach it in Design Forward is going to be wicked in the same way. Um, so it's not going to be a problem in the same way, right? It doesn't, like, you can look at hunger and say, the problem is that people are hungry. And if they weren't hungry, it wouldn't be a problem. Um, with teaching, you're not going to be able to so simply identify a problem. But similarly to something complex like climate change or hunger, we're going to see um, that there isn't just one way to do anything. So the goal in Design Forward is really going to be equipping you to think up and ask the questions that you want to ask in order to improve your teaching practice. Um, and in that sense, Design Forward is also going to be interested more in you as a faculty member than in the courses that you teach. So for example, there's some professional development series that you can take that will ask you to bring your course and it will examine your course, tell you what's good about your course, what's bad about your course, and then it will work on fixing up your course. And there's you know, some things that I think are really helpful about those programs. But what we're really trying to do is to think, okay, it's not, it's not like you have one course, like one birdhouse, and it's a little wobbly, you know, you made it and something's wrong with it, and you want to fix it. What we really want to do is as creators of courses or creators of birdhouses, we want to always be thinking about how to build a better birdhouse, um, you know, not only how to straighten it on its pole, but also like, you know, how to make it better for the birds. Um, and that's not going to be a project that ever ends. So even if one birdhouse you build is better, the idea is that you're going to need to do it again. And we can constantly be rethinking and reimagining um, how we work. So that's why we're gonna focus, um, we'll definitely be talking about your courses, we'll be talking about your activities and your um, assignments and all of that stuff. But we really want to focus on giving you the skills to feel like you're a more confident and agile teacher, as opposed to analyzing your courses and telling you what could be better. We feel like investing in you is going to ultimately allow you to make better courses across all the years that you're teaching at Plymouth. So that's the philosophy, um, two of the foundational philosophies is to look at questions rather than solutions and to think about um, about faculty members rather than specific courses that you're teaching. With that, I'm gonna throw it to Martha for the next one. So the third um, sort of foundational um, value that we wanna talk about um, is this idea of pur from purpose to design. And I'm gonna kind of walk you through a way of thinking about this, but I wanna say that it's gonna sound a little bit linear and hierarchical 
that's not really the point. Um, yes, what I'm going to talk about is about building on top of things, but at, all along the way, we recognize that um, this is kind of an iterative practice where we're constantly going back and reevaluating where we started. So the first thing is about your purpose, and we already talked about this morning. Um, and the purpose, as I've put here, um, on a very personal level for every one of you, the question would be um, why you do the work, why you teach. Um, it's, it's not a, a, like I said at, at, at the start of this uh, um, around noon, like it's not a complicated question, but that doesn't mean the answers aren't complex. Um, so asking ourselves this question and coming back to it again and again, why do we teach? Um, and there's a reason why I think it's really, really important to always center and foundation, use this as a foundation for what we're doing. This next piece of this is just what your teaching is. Um, and this I'm, I'm kind of labeling as just the practical steps that you take to achieve your purpose, right? So you have a purpose, why you teach, why you teach this course, why you teach in your discipline. And then all of you have designed courses where you've in, you know, you've built and instantiated practical steps to try and presumably achieve whatever that purpose is. The third piece of this is what we call our pedagogy. And this is a word we're going to talk lots about um, in intro to pedagogy if you're in that module. Um, this is a really tricky word. It gets used all the time. <laughs> in ways that aren't necessarily, I think, the way we want to think about pedagogy. For us, your pedagogy is the how and the why of your teaching. And the really important thing here is that the why you teach isn't the same thing as the why of your teaching. So your purpose is not your pedagogy. It doesn't mean they're not related, but your pedagogy is about the intentional choices you make about the practices in your classroom. And we really want to help everybody develop a pedagogy around whatever values are important to you as an educator. So that as you're designing courses, courses you teach now, courses you might teach in the future, as you're working with students, as you're thinking through assignments, assessment, you are able to really think intentionally about the choices you're making, that you're not just adopting practices because it's what other people are doing or because it's what somebody has told you or because it's a, on a checklist or a a set of best practices that you read, not that any of those things might be wrong, but are you doing it with intentionality? And then the last piece of this is your instructional design. Um, instructional design is also kind of a, a bucket term that gets thrown around and used in lots of different ways. Very often when we talk about instructional design, we think about it only in terms of online education. Um, increasingly, with the rise of online education and during COVID, there's been this focus on instructional design. What we want to suggest is that actually you are doing instructional design now, whether you realize it or not. Um, the, the analogy I always like to give that other people have said I should repeat because I guess maybe it works is that, you know, I live in a house and I make choices about the way that I design the layout of furniture in my house, right? I actually, my husband would say that I make that choice way too frequently because I like to rearrange the furniture fairly regularly. It's how I reboot myself. So, but those are, I don't do, I do it with intentionality, right? I do it based on the intentions that I've def defined for myself. Um, and then I take that and I take action on it and I move furniture around. Now, I am not an interior designer, but I'm still doing work that is essentially design work. What we really want to do is heighten your awareness about what are those intentional values of your pedagogy, and then how does that get instantiated in the design of your courses, in the design of your teaching, in the design of assignments, in the design of assessments, in the design of the community of the classroom you're trying to create, in the design of, and this is kind of weird, but the design of your relationship with your students, right? So these four things, your purpose, your teaching, your pedagogy, and your, your instructional design are for us sort of interwoven and related to each other, but distinct and different as well. And as you progress through Design Forward, as you progress through modules, we invite you to always go back and look at these things, right? It's totally okay to suddenly have an epiphany and say, you know what? The purpose I thought I had wasn't the purpose I have. 
I need to go back and rethink my purpose. Or it's totally okay to say, oh my gosh, there's a disconnect between that purpose that I identified and where that is leading and what I'm doing at the end with my instructional design. Robin, I see you unmuting. Well, I'm just saying, put the slide forward one. Sorry. There you go. Yeah, so these are the four, these are the four as we see them. Again, I don't wanna say this is hierarchical, but there is a little bit of building on top of each other that's happening here. From your purpose to your teaching, to your pedagogy, to your instructional design. Some of you may have noticed, and actually was the reason I hadn't moved on from this slide yet, but then I forgot to mention it, that I do have critical in here, um, your critical instructional design. We'll talk more about that as you progress through modules, but the kind of instructional design that we're really trying to forefront in Design Forward is what I would call a critical instructional design. It's what makes it unique because it is about intentionality. Um, it is not about checking off a list of items in order to know that you've done the things um, that make something designed or instructionally designed.